Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Doodle Robot, and today I'm going to be discussing the test results of my comparison of Prismacolor versus Crayola versus Brute Fooner Squares versus Astra Pastello Colored Pencils. So, let's get to it. Um, the contenders are here. So we've got... So first, I did just a one swatch test of a color that I reach for a lot in Prismacolors, which would be bronze. I like to do a lot of trees, so I reach for bronze a lot. I hope that's focusing. Anyways, so I kind of picked colors that um, were kind of bronzy in all the different categories. So you'll see that in the test. And then I did a test with I like to do water a lot. I live in the desert, so I love to do anything with water. Um, so I did some watercolors. Uh, so we got Brute Fooners, we got Prismacolors, and I have to say, I did inadvertently pick a Prismacolor that I don't particularly like too much. I feel it's like too soft and mushy. I like the color, but I think that that skewed my test results a little bit. So I did another test with different colors. And I gotta say, that was an eye-opening experience. So, so yeah, we got watercolors. I only did the test with two Crayolas. I was trying to keep the colors as close as possible. Um, and then, so I could only find two Crayolas that kind of kept to that. But then I, at the last second, I decided I would add my Astra Pastello pencils in there. So I, I could have picked a third color, but for the water, I just used two Crayolas. So it may be a little weird, but uh, since I got like surprising results with these colors, I'm totally shocked and surprised. Um, I did another test with different colors. So just, and I tried to make like here, the colors were close together and thus easier to blend together. Here I tried to make it a bigger skip between blended colors. So we have red, orange, yellow, basically for each of the categories, except of course, Oh, those got out of order. Um, except, of course, for the Pastello pencils, as they're just they're just all pastels, so there's not going to be a red. All right, so my results were that uh, results very widely, <laughs> completely unpredictable and surprising. And yes, as we've been told time and again, it does depend on the paper. Every result was different on different kinds of paper. So I tested lots of different kinds of paper. So those are all the contenders there. I'm going to move out of the way and we're going to, we're going to look at the various different kinds of paper. I didn't do every paper, but I did a lot. I'm kind of sick of doing this project now. I want to move on to something else with my life. So the first couple of papers are just papers. So we have, we have a little sketchbook paper here, and we have a bigger sketchbook paper here, which may or may not fit into the, into the screen. But this one is super old. Where's my cover? It is a Canson drawing paper, 70 pound or 115 GSMs, depending on how you your paper oh my gosh no now I've lost it and this this is the one I keep beside me at all times like I'm not one to waste trees so I have had like stuff written in here from years and oh my gosh 20 years ago um, yeah so I've just this is like my test paper for a while I was keeping when I only had 84 Prismacolors I kind of kept my swatches in there they were kind of 84 random Prismacolors before I started coloring um, yeah, but I do all my practices and swatches in there, and now I will have lost my place, I think. There we go. All right, and the other paper I tested on, because I've seen people on their channels, like, hold this up and say, I print off my PDFs on this. And so this paper is uh, Canson Mixed Media. I just picked this up at Walmart. It's 98 pounds or 160, I'm assuming that's GSMs, it didn't write the rest of it. But anyway, so that's a mixed media paper. 
I do not like this paper at all. I will never be coloring on this paper. Um, all right, so let's look at the results there. So I noticed right away when you just do one little swatch, you can't really, you cannot really tell how anything works with one little swatch. So oh, that should be an A. That's the Astra, Astra Pastelo pencil there. But as you can see, so then I, I swatched the first colors because it's all about blending. It's like, how do they blend basically? So I try to do it always in the same order. We've got B is for Brute Fooner, Brute Fooner Square, Prismacolor, Crayola, and Astra Pastelo pencils. So on this little drawing paper, which again was, what did we say the weight was? 70 pounds or 115 GSMs. And this is kind of textury. So surprisingly, or not surprisingly, uh, I thought that the Crayola was easiest to blend in this category. And the Brute Fooners came second and Prismacolor third and at the Astra's fourth. Uh, the Astra's leave like this little scratchy, sorry, is that going to focus? I'm too close. This little scratchy, I need to get that out of the way. Okay, so yeah, they leave this little scratchy thing behind. I noticed in a lot of, a lot of things. So when I tried with the different colors where it's a bigger hop towards between colors, we had different results. So yeah, when I say very widely, I mean between papers and between colors even. So here, Prisma, I scored Prismacolor first. I scored, oh, did I write them down? I scored Crayola second. It's kind of tied with the Pastelo. I gave the little start of Crayola as beating Pastelo. It's hard for me to like do a head-to-head -head comparison with the Pastelos because I'm not bl I'm blending all light colors, which are hard, which always seem like they blend better because they're light col colors. You know, you can't see so much the the degree to which they don't necessarily blend. And so, the Brute Fooners came in last there. So, so this is kind of a textury paper. I noticed that on the textury paper, Crayola like took first place a lot because it's a harder lead, which doesn't surprise me at all. However, the Prismacolors, even though they're a softer lead and sometimes on the textury paper you got to work harder, they still always blend better. That's just always the case in Prismacolor. On every paper that I tried, they blend better and they're the most forgiving pencil. So like if you get carried away and you don't blend something as well as you should, you can just smoosh it in and blend it. So, <laughs> I mean... Prismacolor kind of takes first place in that. Not a big surprise for most of us out there. So that was this paper. Then the paper I don't like, the mixed media paper, Canson again. You can see the various results here. On the first kind of like watercolors, we got, again, this was a very textury paper. I need to buy slick smooth paper because that's what I like to color on apparently. I learned that today as well. Um, so I gave Crayola first, and again, this is kind of where um, Prismacolor's being so soft, like I put too mushy for this paper, but it's especially that cobalt turquoise that is so smushy. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? You've used that colors. There's a few in the, in the Prismacolor set that are really smushy and difficult to work with. Most of them are just the right smushiness, but some are just too, too mushy. Um, so we got Crayola first, the Astra Pastelos second, Brute Fooner Squares third on this very textury paper, and sadly Prismacolors are last. So then when we switch colors, again, Prismacolor comes first here with these colors. Even though it's smushy, but none, I, I feel that like oranges and yellows like blend together beautifully with Prismacolor. So, um, they kind of tied, I gave the edge to Prismacolor, kind of tied with the Brute Fooners. And then third was the Astra Pastelo, and fourth was Crayola this time. The Crayola yellows are super hard to blend with anything else because, you know, they're light. Same problem with the Astra Pastelo pencils. I kind of now think the Astra Pastelo pencils are just a little bit of a glorified Crayola. 
that may give you a hint as to where I ranked them in my in my final findings. But let's move on to coloring books because that's what that's probably what you came to see. So uh, probably the most coloring books I have in my collection would be Creative Haven by because they have all different artists and it's by topic. So I probably have the most of this in my collection. So I definitely want to know what pencil works best here. But Creative Sorry, scary page alert. This is my test page, and I really use it as a test page. We're not kidding around here. So, way down here, I did my uh, my first four colors, bronzy colors. Um, now, I already knew this because before a few weeks ago, all I had in my color pencil collection was uh, Prismacolor and Crayola color pencils. Prismacolor and well actually all of them I think I can show you here when you put them on create space paper no creative haven paper they all get washed out so you can see quite a difference here okay but the astra pastel is over there so we got brute Fooner here it's more intense here we got prismacolor more intense here we got Crayola way less intense on the Creative Haven paper, but more intense there. And the same with the Astro Pastelo pencils. This is a more textury paper. This is much more smooth. I love the way Prismacolors glide over this paper. All right, so in each category, on the first, like the watercolors test here, um, we got Prismacolor first, which is not a big surprise because I already liked the way they glide over. Um, Brute Fooner second, Crayola third, and Astro Pastelo fourth. Mostly because these become these become washed out a little bit, but these become washed out quite a bit more. Everything's pretty much easy to blend on this paper, though. Um, so you know, if you need really light colors, you know, you may reach for those those Pastelo pencils. There, they're going to do nicely, but they are going to be kind of washed out. And so then. Sorry, running out of room on my test page here. They don't all look this bad. So we've got, uh, again, with the different colors, the red, orange, and yellow. We got Prismacolor in first here on Creative Haven paper. We got Brute Funner second. And in this case, the these two switched places. Before I had ranked Crayola third and Astro Pastelo fourth, but they, they swapped places there. So... And quite a few of the next books, you're going to see Crayola scoring first. <laughs> Spoiler alert. All right, so that is my Creative Haven results. All right, so next we have just, this was just handy. I was working in it at the time. So I have talked about my, I really, you know, I want to support artists. I want to support, you know, independent artists. And I want to buy the create space books but the paper oh my gosh and I you know I don't want to buy PDFs and print them off I'm kind of a minimalist I don't want a printer hanging around my house and I don't want a whole bunch of binders with PDFs in them either I like it in a nice compact book but I've talked about in several of my videos my first the first create space book I bought and my experience with it on this page I've talked about it in a couple things it's like oh my gosh it was horrible I drastically changed that page. It didn't look like that. I added a whole bunch of stuff, but I wanted to uh, figure out a better experience than I had here with just the Prismacolors. That's all I had when I did this page was Prismacolors. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, I hear people talking about these mediums, and I bet if I use satin glazing liquid, I can get a better result. So this was my first test page. And I bet if I get a harder leaded pencil on top of the satin glazing liquid, I can get a better result. So this was my test page. I coated it in two thin layers of satin glazing liquid. I then started my test with Prismacolor. The hat colors are all Prismacolor. So these pinks to the peach color there and the blues are Prismacolors. And they worked fine. They make a lot of dust. It's like, it feels like coloring with pastel pencils not pastel colored pencils but pastel pencils 
and it works fine. It's very mushy. They blend well, but it's a little on the mushy side for my taste. Um, so then the rest of the experiment, this was like a head-to-head -head experiment basically, uh, was with Crayola. And the Crayolas worked great. They worked even better. So the satin glazing liquid on the Create Space paper fills in some of those holes because, you know, it's like very textury to get all those white spots. It fills in some of those holes and it makes it a little bit level, a little bit more level for you to color on, is my theory, anyways. Um, so the, the Crayolas worked much better. They're a much harder leaded pencil and they work much better on that surface. They feel, Crayolas actually, to my, to the way I color, they feel like they perform like Prismacolors do on other types of paper, just an FYI. Um, they even worked a tad bit better when I coated it with a coat of just a thin wash of watercolor, like a light orange over the whole fish. I can't remember where I did that, but I did it both ways. Um, you know, and then of course it's satin glazing liquid, so you can just paint the watercolor right on there. You don't have to worry about it like sinking into the page and making it weird and, you know, splotchy and all that. So I'm, I'm honing in on my like satin glazing liquid create space paper, how I make it work. Because I, I want to, I do, I want to, I want to color in these books. I want to buy more of them. I want to support independent artists. I think that's important. Otherwise, you just have a few artists from the big publishing houses and nobody else gets to do their art. So I do want to support that. So my next test was on Create Space Paper. All of my Create Space Paper feels all the same to me. It all comes out of Las Vegas and it feels the same. So I did it on Naked Create Space Paper and I have a satin glazing because I this is just my thing. Um, this is basically printer paper that feels exactly like this paper and colors exactly like this paper. I did two coats of satin glazing liquid on this. This is just my test page for me in general. I did my, I did my test on it. So, so let's look at naked create space paper first. Um, so the results of the first test with the watercolors are Crayola comes in first. Because, like I said, and that's not a surprise to me, I didn't really know where the Astra ones and the Brute Funer ones would fall. I was kind of hoping, you know, everybody says Brute Funers are like a slightly harder lead. Perhaps they were going to be that magic thing that worked great on Create Space Paper, but no, they're not. <laughs> so, uh, Crayola came in first with these colors. Uh, the Brute Funers came in second, Prismacolor third, and Astra. Oh, Astra was tied with Brute Funer for second. I gave slight lead to Astra. Maybe because of the lighter colors, it might have skewed it a little bit. Um, so, and I was using that very mushy cobalt, what is it? Cobalt turquoise, I think, on Prismacolor. So then you can see the results are different here. Now, I should say that Cray Crayola works great here as well. However, with these colors, even though it creates a big waxy buildup, with these colors, Prismacolor worked first, uh, placed first. And Astra's placed second, blending here with these colors. Again, kind of skewed results because those are very light colors. And then we have a tie kind of for third here with the Brute Funer and the Crayola. So it's surprising. Results are surprising. They're all surprising. All right. Then on the satin glazing test page, let's see. We've got with the watercolors, Crayola scores first. This is much more texture. It's it's texturized in a different way. It like it like grips the colors at least the Crayola colors, it grips the colors. Not so much the, the, the Prisma colors, because you'll notice here we had Crayola 1, they're both 1 there. Um, Brute Funer, they're both 2 here, but then these kind of switch places, like the Prisma color scores last here because this, oh my gosh, this 
cobalt turquoise it's just way too soft and you can't really press hard enough with that particular color to get it into all the little the little grippy spaces although the spaces grip great but all right so on the second try with different colors crayola is still first we got prismacolor second with these particular colors you see what i mean by different colors um brute funer's third and then uh oh i guess astra's tied with prismacolor for second again it's difficult to tell with the different colors but okay so that's our create space paper and then we have two of the really big ones we've got joanna bassford Oh, this is Worlds of Wondering. I wouldn't necessarily assume that all Joanna Basford books come with the same paper. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not going to assume with that. So on my first test, right off the bat, I did, when I was like dusting it away, I noticed that this was smearing. So I did a smear test just on this one. So here, surprising, this is a surprising result here. Crayola scored first, tied with, I guess, Astra there. And then for these colors, Brute Funer scored second. And like I said, I was using the mushy color there, scored third. I, like I said, I think that mushy color skewed my results a lot. But anyways, so here you can see with different colors, Prismacolor scored first here. Um, the brute funers are always very dusty, it seems like. They were really dusty here, no dust with those. I think these had like, you know, a medium amount of dust. But Crayolas don't really have a lot of dust. So we got one, these are kind of tied for second. Well, they're, I guess they're all tied for second, like I couldn't decide. Prismacolor was the clear winner. These were all just about the same, so. All right, so drastically different. That's what I mean by drastically different from paper to paper and color to color. Makes it really hard to score your colored pencils. And then uh, because I had such a rough time on this one when I did it with the, some of the colors that I chose, like this purple was a nightmare. Um, I thought I would test it here on this page, uh, on this paper as well. And this is, which book is this? Imagimorphia by Kirby Rosans. Again, I wouldn't necessarily assume that all the paper is the same in all of his books, but probably never good to make that assumption. So on our water color colors, um, I gave it to Prismacolor, but they all did, all of these did really well. Like I couldn't even rank them. I could say, okay, yeah, Prismacolor is the most intense, it blends the best, it's got that smooshability factor. Here you had to work harder for everything, but they all did really well. And then the same thing with uh, the red, orange, and yellow colors. I gave it to Prismacolor just because it's luscious and wonderful, it blends well, it's the easiest to blend. These you have to work a little bit harder, but they all went on really, really well. Like I couldn't even rank them. I didn't know how to rank them. So. So, other things to consider. I'll show you my swatches. These are the these are my new swatches. Sorry, this one's a mess, but these are my Brute Funer swatches. These are the colors you're kind of looking at in the 120 square ones. Seems nice. I haven't really colored a page with them, so I don't know if there's any real holes. I mean, Prismacolor has 150. They have more grays. I'm not a huge gray user. So I don't know that that's going to be a factor for me, but this is what you're looking at. The reds do all seem like very, like they're all the same value. They all vary slightly, but they're just all the same value. Like where's the, where's the value difference? Um, so like in the blues, you know, you have lots of different colors, but there are also lots of different values. Got darker, lighter. So in a lot of color pencil sets, uh, the, the main problem is you get, you get a good range of like mid-range colors, mid-value colors. 
They tend to lack lights and darks. And I would say that Brute Fooner probably is lacking darks just from looking here. I don't see any really dark, dark darks. So there is that, where at least in Prismacolor, you do have dark, dark darks. And then of course, this is such a mess. I was, I will make a better one, but um, I was trying to rank them in like little color families that, you know, mean something to me. Um, so I did that. Up here, when I first got them, I was looking at, because I'm like, do people really need to get these Astro Pastelo pencils? If you have a couple of sets, do you already have all these colors? And my answer to that would be probably, yeah. You probably already have all these colors. They're just jumbled in with everything else. And if you don't, you could probably make them with whatever color you have and a little bit of white would be my thing. So I was, I started out and I kind of did the whole first row here. I was kind of measuring them against uh, the Prismacolors and the ones that had a pretty close match, like here and here, uh, pretty close. The Prismacolor, of course, no big surprise, has a better, better um, pigment payoff. It's just, it seems a little darker because of that, because I think the pigment is just a little bit darker. Uh, so I think that's pretty much the case in all of them. Some didn't have a super close match, or I haven't found it yet. I was also, I hadn't gotten out my, here I got out my Crayolas to see, it's like, because those are the two colored pencils I had, Prismacolor and Crayola. There's pretty much an exact match there. This one was pretty much an exact match here. Um, I do think that may, 